All right, good evening. I would like to call to order the Lakewood, uh, City of Lakewood study session for January 4th, 2021. Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, would also like to mention that we had a meeting prior to this that started at 5.30 to um, uh, pass a resolution which hires our new city attorney and would like to also give her a shout out and welcome uh, Miss Allison McKinney Brown uh, who will now be starting here in the next few weeks. So we've been at it for a while already. This should be fairly, fairly quick. I want to make sure that those folks that want to participate in the study session, now it's not general public comment, but it is the study session format where you can be part of this discussion is uh, one three four six two four eight seven seven nine nine webinar ID nine two zero three nine zero five zero five two three zero again nine two zero three nine five zero five two three zero you'll press star nine to request to speak and then star six so we can come back to that also want to recognize that we're, there were three different comments on Lakewood Speaks two of those representing uh, large uh, neighborhood organizations on the Colfax corridor. So without further ado, oh, I guess I should call roll. So Mr. Clerk, if you please call roll. Paul. Here. Abel. Here. Vincent. Here. Gutwine. Gutwine, sorry, I didn't hear you. You're still muted. Sorry about that. Here. <laughs> uh, Bita. Here. Skilling. Here. Springsteen. Here. Franks. Here. Johnson. Here. Labure. Here. Harrison. Here. We have a quorum. Great. Thank you. I'd ask council to please mute your uh, microphones until you are ready to speak. And then we will start the presentation, which is uh, zoning on Colfax. And this came kind of hot and heavy uh, due to some issues that we'll hear about in a minute. Certainly would like to thank our ward members in wards uh, one and two for bringing this uh, forward to the point that we're at. So, Mr. Parker, good evening. Good evening and uh, good to see all of you. Happy New Year. Um, yeah, all right, can you see my screen? Fantastic. Uh, so I'm here tonight to chat a little bit about zoning, potential zoning changes along Colfax Avenue. Um, as you all are aware, uh, there have been concerns raised by council members and residents uh, of Lakewood about the potential proliferation of gas stations and convenience retail establishments along Colfax Avenue. And the point of the discussion tonight is to get some additional policy guidance from council on uh, proceed on potential zoning changes. Um, as background, uh, from the-, the Travis, you're having a little bit of audio issues. I, I don't know if everybody else is hearing that. Um, Travis, can I suggest if you have your cell phone near you, can you put that away, put it farther away from you? There may be some interference. Let's see if that helps. And if that doesn't help, you may need to drop the video of you. Okay. Is that helping at all? Yeah, it seems like it is. Yeah, you'll have to keep talking for a, a few seconds to make sure. Fair enough. Uh, well, just let me know and I can, I can shut off my video as well. Um, no, I think that's better. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, so since the city was incorporated, uh, Colfax Avenue has contained commercial zoning, which allowed for gas stations and other auto-oriented uses. Uh, this has been the case throughout Lakewood's history. Um, in 2012, that didn't really change. Uh, the entirety of Colfax maintained a mixed-use zone, which allows uh, gas stations and convenience retail. Uh, the one slight exception to that is the areas of blue on the screen um, around Sheridan Station and Wadsworth and Oak um, were changed to a transit context. They still technically allow gas stations and convenience retail, uh, but they have some provisions around design that we'll, we'll see in the next four slides that have effectively pre prevented um, those occurring. 
Uh, these three graphics basically show, uh, th these are cut from the uh, zoning regulations and show the requirements for parking based on the context of the lot. So in, in suburban lots, as you can see on the left, parking can be between a building and a street. Um, in the urban context in the middle, parking must be beside buildings but can't be between a building and the street. And finally, on the right hand side, you can see the transit context requires all parking to be located behind the building. Um, similarly for gas stations, excuse me, on the left, we have the suburban context, which allows a traditional gas station format. The pump canopy along the street frontage, parking in front or beside the building. Whereas on the left, or on the right side of the screen, we see the transit context requirements, which while technically allowing gas stations, require pump canopies to be hidden. And again, have effectively prevented uh, gas stations from occurring in the transit context or in Colfax. Uh, these site requirements combined with a requirement for two stories um, have been um, what has basically prevented a couple of applications for potential gas stations in the transit context. Um, you can see on the screen now a map of the corridor in blue are existing gas stations on or very near to Colfax Avenue. In yellow are the potential gas stations coming up. Two of these, I think, are under construction already. Um, or excuse me, one of these is under construction already. Two of these um, in the formal site plan review and should be uh, applying for building permits in the new year. And two of these are pre-planning review and have not uh, made formal submissions yet. Um, so. Brings us tonight for a series of questions to help staff and our legal team formulate the best path, best path forward um, to meet your goals along Colfax, the community's goals along Colfax. Um, the first question for discussion tonight is any new regulations, should those apply only along Colfax Avenue or more broadly across the city? And the reason this is important is any changes that we make to a particular zone, let's say the MGS zone, which is common along Colfax, um, if we do that without remapping, it would apply to all MGS across the city. So if the intent of tonight uh, of, of the changes are to focus on Colfax, uh, that will necessitate rezoning or Colfax, either the creation of new zones or remapping of the transit along Colfax in, in ways that don't affect areas outside of Colfax. Secondly, um, should you determine that, the, that Colfax is the area of concern and the area of focus, a follow-up question to that is, are we looking at making any changes applicable to the entirety of um, Sheridan and Youngfield, or are there particular geographic areas um, that, that Council has concerns about and others that should be left alone in, in their, you know, in the, with their current regulations. Um, the third tonight has to do with um, use regulations. So, as you may have seen in the presentation already or been already aware, gas stations are called out as a unique use in the zoning code. Therefore, we can relatively easy, easily. Uh, prohibit, you know, change the use permissions, prohibit them within a certain zone or require a special use permit or require distance requirements, uh, other things that make it simple to regulate gas stations once we map the areas that we want to regulate. Um, however, convenience stores fall under the definition of general retail, the same as, as any other type of store. Um, so there's no uh, real way to use use permissions to regulate convenience stores. So if we are only a concern, if the council is only concerned about gas stations, that's a simpler task. If the council is also concerned about convenience retail, traditional auto-oriented retail, um, then we will have any solution. We'll have to deal with some of the requirements that I talked about: the uh, you know uh, parking in the back and, and gas pumps in the back and that sort of thing. And finally, the final question for council is. To the extent that we can use use restrictions to limit gas stations, um, how far is, 
council like to go with those restrictions? Are we prohibiting outright? Um, are we looking at requiring special use permits so that they would be allowed with, with a public review? Um, we can look at other things like distance requirements as well so that um, they could be allowed if there's no other gas stations in the, in the vicinity. Um, so we're interested in council input on that question as well. Um, some other things to think about um, as you have your discussion tonight. Um, oh, again, I want to call out that we've had great success in our transit contacts uh, in using uh, both gas stations and auto-oriented uh, convenience retail through our existing form regulations. So one of the suggestions will probably be to extend those to those form regulations to other areas of Colfax that we want to uh, to live at gas stations and inconvenience retail. Um, in addition, council may, may want to consider giving us guidance on some non-zoning options. Uh, you know, council has authorized the creation of the design review committee. Um, we talked about design review guidelines around, along Union. I think the next area that we were planning to, to tackle anyway would have been Colfax Avenue. And so one option would be to uh, create some new design guidelines for Colfax Avenue um, and and uh, activate the design review committee along Colfax Avenue. And then I, I apologize for some words being missing on the slide here, but another option is, is some city-led redevelopment. So the city getting involved with, um, you know, consolidating or purchasing properties and turning them over and, and, and helping the redevelopment process. So those are certainly options that council can, can consider having us directing us to pursue. Um, so I'll leave you with this slide for discussion purposes. These are the questions we're hoping to have answer so that we can, uh, as, as a next step, bring proposed recommendations to Planning Commission and back to Council. All right, great. Thank you for that presentation. And again, I would like to just echo that if, if folks do want to kind of revisit this whole presentation and it is on Lakewood Speaks. There is a thing about an eight or nine minute video where the community can can review this. And so we'll certainly go into so some questions. I, I guess for me, certainly understand the need on this corridor. And I'd just be curious, and, and we don't have to answer this now, but as we move forward, when you talk about changing this in the whole zone district, are we seeing this throughout? I know at one time there was one company that look, is looking or was looking to do eight or nine of these throughout the city. So it might make sense in some areas, but maybe not so concentrated. And so that gets into maybe some of those distance requirements. And then I certainly, especially as it applies to West Colfax, you know, hearing from the community about their desires and needs and wants, it would make sense to me that the city would try to engage because we're certainly not getting what we want through the free market system, but it's also a challenging time for the city to engage financially, uh, but maybe there's other tools that are available that could help, you know, lead to more of what the community wants. So I will now turn it over to our hands up. I'll start with the wards that, uh, that are certainly kind of sprung this and uh, Mr. Abel, your hand is up and then Mr. LeBeer and then Ms. Harrison. Thank you, Mayor. I agree with a lot of what you just said. Uh, I, I also have a bit of concern that this is a symptom uh, of something we didn't expect from the zoning code and that being a symptom, it could spread to other uh, major parts of the city. Uh, and I think rezoning would be difficult if we do um, this rezoning and then it occurs over on Wadsworth or Sheridan or Kipling. So I think we need an answer that more would uh, would apply citywide. And Travis, I was wondering if y'all had uh, discussed conditional use permits, mm -hmm. which would give us a little more to say about what sold inside the store for health reasons. Uh, these things uh, our necessities and uh, they are very convenient to all of us and I don't know what life would be without them but uh, they do uh, 
They do provide a limited selection of food, and some folks use these as their grocery stores. Uh, so a conditional use permit could address something like that. Uh, and then there's licensing. Uh, as opposed to a special use, which is a designation of its own and doesn't allow us to regulate, I don't believe, what goes on after the special use permit is granted as long as it stays with, uh, within the uh, original plan. Uh, and have we looked at licensing? Licensing would give us a chance to include operations that are already in existence simply license fueling stations and then if we have existing problems we could use the licensing to take care of that as well as future uh, uh, situations that might arise future applications so just wondering and, and do you uh, Am I wrong in expecting this could grow all the way across the city, Mr. Parker? Yeah, I mean, this is certainly a, a current market demand. It's it's not so much a fallout from the zoning code. Like I said, gas stations have been allowed along Colfax the entire throughout our history. It's just right now the market's calling for more gas stations. And so it, it could end up being a citywide issue and not just a Colfax issue at some point. And, and just to follow up there, they used to uh, have to go through more steps for approval than they do now. So, uh, yeah, I don't know along Colfax. I, my understanding is Colfax had, you know, 3C and 4C zoning throughout, which was pretty permissive. But I, I haven't researched that further. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, and if you would, if you wouldn't mind after you speak to please lower your hand. Thank you. And then also I, I do see that we have somebody under uh, who's called in. So as, when we're done with this conversation, we'll go to the public input portion. So right now I have uh, Mr. Labeer, Ms. Harrison, Ms. Johnson, and then Ms. Gutwein. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, thanks, Travis, for the presentation. Um, I think generally speaking, it probably makes sense to have some sort of distance requirement, uh, probably across the city. I think Wheat Ridge, for example, has, uh, something like that in addition to a sort of conditional use permit. But I, I mean, I think I, having some sort of, uh, sort of broader policy would probably help. And it also helps solve the problem of having one on one side of the street and maybe another one on the other side of the street because they think they're getting different markets for traffic flow. Um, I also think it could potentially make sense to have a similar type of requirements for convenience stores that don't have gas stations and ones that have uh, gas pumps. I don't think those policies necessarily should be the same or they should probably be different, but it might make sense to have, have them for both. And I say that because I think it's more problematic and more of the focus should be on the ones with gas pumps uh, or pumps, but there is a nutritional issue uh, with the just regular convenience stores too, that I think is at least worth exploring or, or studying or learning more about. I don't know if it's a big issue. That wouldn't be my main concern, but you know, when you have too many convenience stores, similarly, uh, when you have too many uh, dollar stores, this was an issue in Mississippi. I know they did some regulations. I think it was in uh, Jackson, Mississippi, I believe, because they had too many uh, dollar stores and they couldn't get any regular grocery stores in the community because they were all getting basically priced out. So I, I do, you know, I don't know how big of an issue that is. Maybe it's not really an issue here. I, you know, I don't know. I, I'm happy, be happy to learn more about it or explore it, but I certainly want to hear from you and, you know, what you think or best practices are or what you're seeing in other communities. Um, I think the special use permit just straight up makes sense to take a look at that just because uh, then you have some community input, you know, on each of these uh, projects. If people don't care, that's right there. Maybe, you know, some people want to live by a gas station. You know, I, I probably wouldn't necessarily mind. I have to drive relatively far to get mine. Um, 
But at the same time, I don't think it solves the problem because special use permits are only effective when uh, they're engaged citizenry in that particular area. So there might be some parts of the community that are really active and they're going to push against having these kind of things. And then there's other parts of the community that maybe they're not as active, but you know, this is as much of a, and could be as much of an issue in that part of the community. So I don't think it solves it. And so I think that's what the distance requirements for uh, to help with some of that. But I think it does help with having more community engagement. So at the very least, if you do get this in your part of the community, you know, you have an opportunity to, to weigh in. Um, so I think that's my main thing, but I think you know what we're trying to achieve and hopefully um, you can bring us some ideas, on, you know, and I know we've heard some, but, you know, bring us ideas on, on what sort of best practices are. Well, ultimately, I think we all want to see a vibrant, thriving economic hub on Colfax, and we don't want it all taken up by parking lots and gas stations. <laughs> so, so anyway, I hope that uh, helps a little bit. Thanks. Yep. Thank you, Mr. LeBeer. And, and while, while we're going through council, these questions, keep in mind the four that are on the left will probably not probably we'd like to get consensus on, on some direction to, to continue this conversation based on these four. So we'll do a check in after everybody has an opportunity to ask questions or communicate their, their points of view. Mr. Parker, did you have something to add to, to well, that? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, at a fifth, based on the conversation so far, I think both Mr. Abel and LeBure brought up an interesting point of we have been looking at this up till now um, just on the proliferation of the use in general and maybe limiting new, the creation of new ones. We hadn't really looked at or, or understood that there was a potential concern over um, what's sold within the, the stores, either existing or new ones. And, and that's something that we can certainly explore and suggest um, regulation around. It may, may or may not be within zoning, um, but I'd love to get consensus around whether that's something we should tackle as well as, you know, just the existence of, of new ones. Okay, we'll add that as the fifth. So uh, I have uh, Ms. Harrison, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Gutwein, then Ms. Vincent. Thank you, uh, Mayor Paul, and thank you, um, uh, Travis for a great presentation and um, I'm going to ask a couple questions. I have not um, decided either way on this, but um, one thing that I would ask is uh, if you've driven up and down Colfax recently, and I'm sure we all have, we're starting to see an awful lot of places that are closed up. Um, and my question to you would be, is something better than nothing? I am not advocating all of this be approved. I'm just saying we have to be really careful with what we craft here because of the fact that um, I think some uh, businesses might actually help drive um, other businesses coming in there. And when I think about, you know, at Jewel and Wadsworth, we had that old gas station that was, was empty for a really long time when Starbucks was built there, it really helped kind of give that whole corner a little shot in the arm. Um, and um, I, I would wonder if maybe uh, approving some of these, I would probably support the idea of two-story. I'm curious though, Travis, are there two-story gas stations now that I haven't noticed? If there are, would you tell me where they are? No, they're, they're not. And quite frankly, that's been the primary factor in uh, avoiding that. The, the, there were a couple of proposals for lots within the transit context, and it was really the two-story requirement in, in, in combination with the, the parking in the, in the, and the gas. In the rear. That kept it from happening. The, the actual true transit, where you pulled the building forward and then had parking in the pump in the back? Yeah, and, okay. but primarily, I mean, they, they had almost worked around that or worked, you know, a building that met that requirement. It was really the, the two-story requirement that was successful in, in preserving the lots. Okay. Um, so I guess if if our goal is to not have gas stations, and, I, and I'm not sure that I support that because Colfax is still 
a pretty active corridor for transportation. Um, and I believe that it still needs some. I'm not saying every corner needs to have a gas station on it. Please don't hear that. But I'm not sure that I believe that getting rid of every gas station on Colfax would be a goal here. Um, I could certainly support if we want to go with a two-story requirement for new business, that means they're going to have to get a little bit more creative with what they do. I could support that. The other question I would have is on number four, your question there, could we use a time frame for future developments? Let's just, and I'll use the word moratorium, and that may not be the right word, but I'll use that for the time being, that we could implement a zoning change then for two years, let's say that, because I think part of what we're seeing is as a result of the COVID, we've got a lot of businesses that are extremely challenged right now, et cetera, et cetera. And these look like good opportunities for a, a piece of property. Um, potentially, if we waited two years from now um, to, to implement um, more gas stations uh, along the way, then there might be the economy may have improved a bit and it wouldn't necessarily be the first choice. So my question to you is, if we do some sort of changing to the zoning, can we put a time frame to come back and look at that and say, we're going to do this zoning change for two years or three years? Is that a possibility? I don't see why not. I mean, I think you can certainly put in a rule with a sunset. Not, not having a lawyer here, uh, I, I, I caveat that, but I, I certainly believe that's possible. Well, if we could look at that, that would be interesting to me to see just because I'm not sure, you know, with the economy as it is, again, I'd rather see something rather than nothing. Um, but I also don't want to put um, gas stations on every corner. The next question that I would ask is, and I really could support the idea of a maximum number of feet, you know, between businesses of the same type, i.e. gas stations um, and gas stations with convenience stores. I think we could easily do that. I could support that um, because we've got that in other places and I could support that. So that's all I have for right now. Thank you. All right, Ms. Harrison, and, and just to your point, uh, counselors in Ward 1 and myself have been lobbied very hard on a piece of property that would require a two-story, and it is just not feasible for that use. So it's kind of chicken and egg. It does sit there vacant, but it's also keeping a potential use away from four others that are within, I'd say, half a mile. So it's it's a real delicate balance, and that's, I think, what is to the crux of this conversation. There probably is, there's a 7-Eleven downtown that is two stories because Denver does have or had this regulation in place, but it's very few and far between. And that leads me to Ms. Johnson. Thank you. And I appreciate what you just mentioned, Mayor. Um, I am also extremely grateful that this has come before council in such a timely way. Um, this all at once came to our attention that we were starting to have some issues. Um, Karen, I have to kind of chuckle when you use the word moratorium. About three years ago, I used that as a way to pause to accept permits until we could kind of do some cleanup with our zoning ordinance. And I was literally crucified with that word. So you might want to use the word pause instead of moratorium. Um, you know, I have real mixed feelings about this. As a council, as a city, it is really uh, not our place to choose winners and losers. It, for me, it really is a free market kind of issue. A couple of other things, however, you know, um, we are very much being lobbied that people need to ride their bikes, need to walk, need to take the light rail. And of course, the light rail is just 
what, two blocks off of Colfax. Um, we've also have a tremendous amount of high density on the west end there. About two or three years ago, there were a thousand new apartment units within a mile's uh, radius uh, by the target, the old target area. And, you know, you're going to have to um, help me understand something. Um, it seems like an irony to me because folks in high density are not supposed to want to have cars and not going to have use them and and uh, yet we've got all of these gas stations going up up and down Colfax something just isn't ringing for me you would think that 7-Eleven mobile oil would be doing a market analysis having them so close and as uh, Travis as I look at your stars there it looks like a total of about 13 potential there's already several um you know that just seems strange when there's so much high density and high density people don't want cars somehow i'm just not catching the point here a couple things and i'm very appreciative of the points that all of you have brought up you've really hit the nail on the head in a lot of ways I believe it is a citywide issue and that anything that we do does need to affect the entire city. Mayor, as you mentioned, there is one uh, business that wanted to have, was projecting to have nine more of um, these gas convenience stations in Lakewood. I don't, I'm not getting at why they think that we are such a good supporter of that. Um, I like the idea of distance requirements, as you're all very well aware, at Colfax and Kipling. We've got a come and go, gonna be on one side of the street, uh, a 7-Eleven on the other, and then just across the street at Dino's, it looks like Mobile Oil is gonna put in something. Basically, they are, they're right, they're within a half a block of each other. Um, I just don't understand that. One of my concerns of what's been going on is that uh, the restaurant like Dino's, I'm not sure what's going on with Perkins. I know that there was interest in that side of also becoming a gas yeah. and convenience station. And these are locations that had established restaurants. Uh, we are using and allowing and what's happening is that land is being taken up with convenience stations that maybe at some point after the pandemic is a little bit more behind us, some entrepreneurs might understand the value of an established restaurant site and maybe would be looking at those. Um, I don't know. Um, I do believe that we should have the same policy. We're both a gas and a convenience store. Charlie's idea of having um, a conditional use permit regarding what kind of things they sell in them, that's intriguing to me. Um, I do like the special use uh permit because it goes to the planning commission if i'm not mistaken and then that gives you one more layer of accountability some more eyes to actually take a look at something and to see what what the potential is for long term with things um, i think we have to be very cognizant that there are many people in single family homes that are not that far away. You've got Daniels, Welchester, you've got Applewood, you've got the folks just north of Westland that have established residences. They have all been working in unison and along with the West Colfax Corridor uh, Association to look at a plan of the way that they would like to see the city developed on Colfax as well. There is a 2040 plan out there.
To be honest with you, I do not know what it shows, what it looks like, but we've got to be sensitive to, to what the neighbors are looking at, what they want to live with. They're paying property taxes close by and uh, we cannot ignore their voices in this. I do not go along with the two story personally. They're at Quail and Colfax. There's a subway shop that wanted to repurpose, wanted to decorate, wanted to do whatever remodel and they couldn't or they didn't want to go into a two story. So for, you'll have to help me, Travis. Maybe it's been three years that that subway has been vacant. Um, we have to be careful that we don't have the kind of restrictions in place that for some people, they're just not gonna be willing to go along with it. And then we have, as you notice, Karen, there's a lot of uh, vacancies up and down Colfax right now. Um, I like the idea of having a sunset because anything that we do, you know, we need to uh, understand that the marketplace is going to change after this pandemic. Um, what people want may change. I do know that there is a very high interest in having restaurants return, nice places where people can go and eat. Um, so that's again, my concern about seeing the land where restaurants are being taken up with this. I guess for now, that's all I have to say. Thank you. Great, thank you. I think you answered quite a few of those questions right there in one through five. All right, so I have Ms. Gutwein, Ms. Vincent, Ms. Springsteen, Mr. Bita, and then Mr. Labir, your hand went back up. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Travis, uh, for the presentation. Um, I think that nearly all of my questions um, got answered through this discussion. Um, you know, I think I just want to reiterate I think that it's really important um, that we keep the long-term vision of this corridor in mind. And, you know, I, I think that the reason kind of that we're having this conversation is the convenience stores and the gas stations on every corner, it just doesn't fit with that vision. And it's not gonna help us get closer to that vision. Um, I do also though, agree and understand kind of where Karen's coming to, or Councillor Harrison is coming from um, because it is it's a it's a little bit of a concerning time to place additional regulation um, on business but I think that you know I think that the distance um, the distance regulation makes a lot of sense and Travis my question is is there a downside to doing the distance um, Regulation, have you seen that have a negative impact in other communities? Um, I don't know that I've ever seen it used for gas stations. Um, I've seen it, you know, we use it for uh, group homes. Um, I'm trying to think about other things. Uh, so, so it, you know, it, it can be done um, and it works. Um, I, ha I haven't looked for or found an example of it being done for gas stations yet. So I guess we would be the <laughs> among the first. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I think that it really, it seems like it's a clean way to accomplish what we want to do, which is just limit kind of the concentration. Um, what I want to add is I do think it's important to include convenience stores in this discussion um, because, you know, I think what we're hearing from the community is those equally don't fit in the economic vision of that corridor. And I think that the food conversation is really is really important, important, especially when we're talking about the Colfax area. Um, the only other real question I have is, it, it sounds like we are not yet seeing this in other parts of the city, but we could or were potentially likely to. Is that fair to say? Um, perhaps, I mean, there's nothing other than market forces preventing it in other parts of the city. Um, 
basically, you know, our suburban and urban context mixed use districts for the most part allow these gas stations. Um, so, you know, Wadsworth, Kipling, Alameda, other places could see it. Um, we talked earlier about a market study. I mean, likely what had, you know, there, there were six blue uh, stars on that map of existing gas stations. So likely there is a market study out there that shows there's only six gas stations on Colfax and everybody saw that. And so everybody put in their proposal for a gas station on Colfax, right? And that's why we have five new proposals at the same time, because everybody's looking at the same information and not, you know, they're not doing a market study that shows each of their other applications coming in. And so that's that's what happens with the market system is that, you know, there's equal information out there and everybody's jumping on it. And then tomorrow we have twice as many as we need. Interesting. Um, and I get, so that's my very last question is if we pass this, are all of the, the stars, the ones that are potential applications, those would all be impacted or they're far enough along that they would not be impacted by this? I, so outside of, so we can talk about, you know, um, licensing requirements or uh, municipal regulations about what they sell and that sort of thing and that could affect everybody who's in business now uh, but nothing we do in zoning is going to make anybody who's already open go away or anybody who's far enough along in the process and most of those yellow ones are either under construction or you know under review for that I think there are two of the yellow ones that are still early enough in the process that, could, that they could be stopped by any action so all of the others except for the two are likely to just well be and, yeah obviously again we have six that are open now there's nothing that can happen to those and we have again one under construction and two others that are um already submitted and going through plan review so yeah nothing we you as council do or we as staff do is can stop those in the current regular or under any regulation okay um all right well that's really helpful uh, I wonder then, you know, I, I still think we should continue with this conversation. I wonder how many more we'll see along that area given that information. But I do think we should continue. Um, I think this is an important conversation. So thank you. When we do distance things like marijuana shops and pawn shops. Okay, I have Ms. Vincent, then Ms. Springsteen, and then Ms. Franks pulled her hand up. So I want to get through everybody's first round. And then I have Mr. LeBeer, Mr. Abel, and Ms. Johnson. Yes, thank you. Um, I don't have a lot to add for that, so I can basically just go through the through the questions. Um, I think that any new regulations uh, should apply citywide. Um, Colfax has for some reason I've always been the first one I remember ver working very hard on the whole pawn shop issue um, when they started up on Colfax and then we had um, quite a few of the storage units so I think what's ever probably applicable to Colfax we would want to do uh, citywide um, and as far as the uh, proposed rezoning I'll tell you I think it should probably be um, for all of Colfax which may be a moot point if we do um, citywide. Um, but if you've noticed that interestingly, there was only one star between Sheridan and I think almost up to Carr, which is on Pierce and Wadsworth, or Pierce and Colfax, I'm sorry, which many people are in favor of actually um, with the proposal that's coming in there. Um, I do do just want to throw out a caution though please about convenience stores um i understand that and i do absolutely i would personally like to see some regulations on that and not just gas stations but i do throw out a caution because um i have been in um some of the places there's um there's affordable housing that's very close to sheridan 
and those people do not have cars and the only place uh, close to them now where they do do shopping unfortunately is at the 7-eleven on colfax and sheridan um i think there's a lot of probably root causes for that and a lot of different issues that we can look at but just just remember that sometimes when we want to do things we just maybe think of one population and um basically i'm in favor of distance requirements even though there's only one that's going on in certain areas if we don't do distance requirements we can't tell maybe what will happen with that so that's it thank you mm -hmm. Spring hi there um Yeah, I'm having trouble with my screen where I can only see a certain thing. So hopefully you all can see me. Um, I don't know. I guess the first thing that popped to mind was with respect to businesses uh, along this corridor was just um, the word laissez-faire with respect to this particular issue which supports uh, the free market, letting market forces determine price and production. Competition of the market players di dictates the market with the government acting only as a re regulator. So I, I don't know, that just kind of popped to mind, but what also popped to mind is how precious our time is on this council uh, and I'm curious about an agenda item such as this, when you have um, hundreds of businesses in our city that are failing right now, and you have people like the owner of Dickies who is desperately reaching out to us repeatedly, asking for help uh, shoring up businesses uh, I guess one of my questions is why are we spending an entire study session on how to restrict businesses rather than how to shore up the ones that are failing because of COVID? So that's, that's one question. Um, another question is, you know, why we're discussing uh, just businesses along this corridor when we have other situations where, for instance, businesses are invading our residential neighborhoods and we we don't want to discuss that kind of thing. And so I, I have this sense that we have this culture of regulation in this city to help only the wealthy businesses like for instance, developers could kind of do whatever they wanted until the voters voted on 200. Uh, but businesses in these lower income sections of the city are, are treated disparately. So another example would be the lodging license issue. So you have um, police knocking on the doors of homeless people in in the Colfax corridor where I know they're not doing that with um, uh, people for instance at a hotel in Belmar so why are why are we treating lower income sections of this city sort of in a discriminatory way would be my question and then um, well, let's see. Um, then my final question is, is this corridor zoned only for business? Uh, or if these businesses are prevented from going in, do, does some of this property potentially go to more development of of uh, residential type stuff, or is it strictly business uh, zone? All right, thanks. Those are my questions. So, Travis, do you want to answer that last one, and I'll I'll ask the council members in these areas if they want to address those other questions. 
Sure. Yeah, the, the entire Colfax corridor is zoned mixed use, which allows um, a wide range of businesses and residential. So um, a lack of gas station um, still leaves a lot of opportunity for restaurants, other types of retail, offices, residential. Um, there, there's a pretty wide open list of uses available on any of these properties. And so I will just keep going. Uh, I'm happy to address the lodging license at your pleasure, Ms. Springsteen, if you want to know the history of that. There's there's a long history and, and it's has to do with over 17,000 calls for service, I think, throughout the years. So a lot of issues, but um, we'll keep going with questions. And if the other council members want to tackle why are we doing this um, and, and those other questions raised, I ask you to please weigh in. So, Mr. Bita. Thank you, Mayor. Can everyone hear me? Am I coming through all right? Yes, sir, loud and clear. Okay, thank you. Um, so I'm gonna kinda, kinda put the bow, my conclusion and then why, I, why I'm going there, um, kinda go in the reverse. Um, I would be in favor of a, um, very surgical minimalist approach to this issue in other words to put it another way the least restrictive regulations um the, the, the least restrictive they are the better i'm going to like it um uh, if if there are any needed um I, I i want them to be just just what absolutely you know uh, we need and and i would rather um start out with with minimal and then if we need to, we need to add more regulations later then then we can do that we can do pretty much what we want but i but i i'm not in favor of painting with a broad brush on this so i'm, I'm opposed to making this anything citywide we're talking about colfax and possible issue in colfax and so i think that's where we ought to focus on uh if, if this becomes a problem in other parts of the cities uh, from what I, if I'm understanding what Mr. Parker is saying right now, it's not a problem. And uh, yeah, it could be if, if if the market dictates it, but but right now it's not. So, you know, the old saying, if it's not broke, let's not fix it. And so I would say, let's focus on Colfax. Um, I, I would be uh, opposed to doing the entire quarter. I, again, a surgical approach, minimal approach on just those intersections or areas that need need attention those are the ones i would be in favor of, fo of focusing on not a broad brush of approach all the way up and down colfax somebody mentioned the colfax vision and and i gotta tell you i don't know what that is uh, i i am not sure anybody knows what the colfax vision is i know we want to we want to see it change i know we want to see it be a a vital business uh, corridor. I, I mean, I get that, but but beyond that, what does that look like? I mean, I think to me, uh, it it ought to meet the needs of the neighborhood. It ought to it ought to meet what what the people that live there need. And um, and right now, what the market is telling us is that they need more convenience stores and more gas stations. That's what they're telling you. I I can assure you that these companies that are looking to put these convenience stores in are not doing it on a whim. I can assure you that they've done their marketing research. They know much better what's going on there than you do or I do or anybody else. You bet they know what's going on. They're not spending millions and millions of dollars on one of these, you know, for the fun of it. So they're doing it because they're, they, they anticipate a need they've done their marketing and they know it's there so that's part of the that's the that's the free market that's what the you know Councilor Springsteen's talking about the laissez-faire leave it alone let the free market do its own thing you know I grew up over here off of uh, um, Wadsworth in Mississippi when I was a kid there was a gas station on every corner and on 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 uh, on, on that intersection, every all four corners had a gas station, and for they had for a number of years. And you know, it was kind of nice because they were in gas wars about every other week, 
And, you know, this, of course, this was back when gas was about 20 cents a gallon, but, you know, I've dated myself, but, but, you know, gas was pretty cheap, but they were in gas wars all the time. And who do you think benefited from that? You know, the consumer, the people that lived in the neighborhood. Eventually the market made change, change that. And right now there's only one gas station on, on the corner. The other three are gone. And then there's one uh, a ways up on, on Wadsworth. But so you, you could say at least two of them are gone because over years the market, you know, took care of it. And you, that's, that's what's going to happen here. If there's too many of them, they're, they're going to, they'll go by the wayside. And if not, they're going to, they're going to meet the needs of the neighborhood. And, and I'm not sure we should be, like Councillor Johnson said, I don't think we want to be or should be in the position of picking winners and losers. Um, and there's, I, I think you, it doesn't take much imagination to understand why there might be a need for certainly these, these convenience stores for people that live in that area that don't have vehicles that are using bicycles and scooters and walking um, you know, they may, they may uh, not be able to go to Safeway or, or any of the major stores, you know, and, and convenience stores is going to have to walk or ride their bike. And I don't think it takes much imagination to see that there, there's, there's a need here with all the development and uh, that has gone on, on, on West Colfax. So I would, I would urge council to consider using a very surgical minimal approach here just do what we actually absolutely have to do and see how it works and if we have to come back and make more changes that's fine but let, let the marketplace run run its course here and um you know there's still lots of there's plenty of development left uh that needs to be done on colfax i mean we're talking about you know four or five different spots that are that are being proposed here I mean, there's still miles and miles there of West Colfax that, that is open for redevelopment. So I don't really see this as a, I'm not sure that this is a major issue. And uh, um, I, I would defer to some extent to our counselors uh, that are, that who cover, you know, Ward, Ward 1 and, and 2, because um, they know more better than we do as to what their, what the needs are of their, at least I do. Of their of their needs of their constituents and so to some extent i am really interested in in their their thoughts as well that's all thank you thank you and I certainly i, I want to echo that to when we finish up with miss franks we'll start the order again and it looks like it's the ward ones and twos that have their hands up and if you could elaborate because this is how this was brought forth this came through through concerns from the community that went through wards one and two so miss franks you're up Thanks, Mayor Paul. Appreciate that. Uh, um, certainly wanted to also thank staff for the presentation and the information that they put online. Um, certainly, i am uh, been listening to everything and appreciate all the different perspectives. I just wanted to add a couple comments and then I do have one question that I'd like to uh, present to Travis and if he's not, if you're not prepared to answer tonight, that's fine. One is I wanted to talk about the fact that um, I hear a lot from uh, Ward 4 constituents about diversity of businesses um, uh, in areas and that helping, you know, strengthen the uh, economic engine in that area. Uh, we get a lot of uh, feedback on how many auto parts stores we have very, very close together and competing with one another. And so I think that there's something to be said about um, uh, encouraging or finding ways to facilitate diversity of business types. That way, if any one uh, business segment has a rough patch, uh, you know, you have uh, less of an intensive impact. So certainly from an economic engine standpoint, diversity can be real helpful. Um, I also think that we, we kind of need to be um, uh, thoughtful about the fact when we say, you know, let the market forces take care of things. Well, with regards to like high density um, housing, um, you know, I, I don't think that that was something that the community wanted just the market forces to, to take control, whether you were for it or against it. So I think there's some arguments there that, um, you know, uh, maybe having businesses that are more difficult to transition, like a growth, like a gas station with all of its infrastructure, maybe 
a difficult uh, switch. So um, I, I certainly think that there's some uh, uh, more discussion and I need to learn more about uh, from wards uh, one and two, what those needs are. But Travis, where my question came into is on question number four, where it's talking about distance requirements. And what I'm trying to understand is, do we have areas um, similar to like Union where uh, traffic patterns, um, U-turns and that type of thing are more problematic and a strict distance requirement could in some areas of our city harm people from ingress and egress from a gas station where it makes it a, a safety hazard. And so I'm just trying to make sure we're really thoughtful that if we do put in a distance requirement that we're thoughtful about how our traffic engineers for certain properties, that may cause traffic problems of people trying to get in and out of those in order to go to the one that's quote closest to them. So if you're prepared to speak to that tonight, great. If not, I'd just like more information on that. Uh that, that's a great question that uh, we we haven't tackled yet. Uh, you know, pending pending your guidance tonight. But yes, yeah, certainly, traffic engineering has not weighed on this. Weighed in on this. I mean, if you think about gas stations, they often locate across the street from each other. The idea being that you know one is going to take all the westbound traffic on Colfax, and the other is going to take all the eastbound traffic. And you don't. You're right. You don't necessarily want everybody having to to cross Colfax to get uh, get to a gas station. So that's something that if if we move forward on distance requirement, uh, we definitely bring in the traffic people to weigh in on, on that and, and maybe have some exceptions for certain scenarios. Thank you. I, I just wanted to, us to be real thoughtful about that while we were in that planning process. Uh, for me, uh, just to kind of weigh in, because I know the mayor's wanting to get some type of consensus I, I am leaning more into the looking for things that would apply citywide. Um, for me, it just, you know, from a fairness standpoint and a predictability standpoint, but certainly I'm going to be uh, all ears open as the discussion continues to see where uh, we may want to land. And that's all I've got. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you, Ms. Franks. Okay. So I did have counselors <laughs> Labeer, Abel, Johnson, Vincent your hands were up and certainly would welcome any context that you could lend to some of the questions that were asked and as to why we're dealing with this or or things along those lines so uh i guess is that for me to go <laughs> sure sorry about that um sure well yeah i think the first thing i would just add is that i think the reason we're having this discussion is because community and and you know has engaged with in particular uh ward one and ward two counselors pretty heavily i know they've you know made their comments known to to all of council but you know this is a community uh discussion that i think is the reason we're here in the first place um and i guess i i would just add that um you know i i certainly understand the free market uh discussions um and you know i'm always real sensitive to to those type of uh discussions as well i you know but at the same time you know we're trying to build a community uh here that i think um that reflects really values uh that we all you know set out as members of this this community and what's good for one particular business or or company is not necessarily uh conducive or necessarily in line with you know the vision of our community members and i think that discussion was already um mentioned but i think you know we you know this is what we do we do this all the time uh where we try to shape populations in a way that uh, would better suit uh, the members of our community whether it's you know our parking requirements which we've made changes to uh whether it's you know requiring strict connections or open height requirements or slope plans or all the other kind of stuff that uh, that we do but i think this is particular and particularly interesting this topic with gas pumps because there's also a safety component and there's an environmental component too i think it should be uh, a little bit about um you know these things you're uh, long after 
their gun. Um, but I, I think I would just say, uh, Sharon, I think, sounded up pretty well. Councilor Vincent, uh, I, I agree with a lot of what she said. I would support, you know, citywide thing. Uh, I think it just makes sense to have some sort of uh, uniformity. I think uh, Councilor Franks mentioned a good point. Uh, you know, I think distance requirements is sort of just the low hanging simple fruit. And I don't think it's perfect. I think there might be other elements that we want to throw in there, but I think something with distance makes a lot of sense. If you want to have an exception for things that are directly across the street due to traffic situations, sure, I think that that's fine. But I think this is sort of the, the low hanging fruit. And as I've mentioned before, I think something in the realm of special use is probably uh, helps with the community input uh, element. I think as far as uh, what our community wants to see, I think the 2040 plan is pretty clear. Um, there's a lot of good pieces in there if you take a moment to take a look at that plan and i think uh, walkability is a huge component of that revitalizing our infrastructure having a walkable community with coffee shops and art and art spaces and galleries and that sort of thing and i think that's why we've done uh, we've been doing a whole host of things uh trying to really help make uh you know colfax um, more vibrant and right now uh you know our community is talking about these plans again they're renewing their 2040 plan so i think this is a, a you know i think the low-hanging fruit is get some regulations in there to just sort of protect what we have but they're redoing their plan right now and we should be taking a hard look and making sure that we're codifying the plan that's being created by the community uh, right now with wcca and all the people engaged with that um so anyway hope that adds a little bit of clarity uh it wasn't just a wild tangent thanks all right and so going forward, Mr. Abel, you're next. Do you want to maybe touch on, sounds like some of our colleagues aren't familiar with the 2040 plan, maybe what that is and, and who's a part of that or Ms. Vincent or there he's holding it up or Ms. Okay, I'll, I'll go with that and we'll roll. I'll be happy to get into that. All three of our responses today come from, on uh, Lakewood Speaks, I believe, come from people associated with the uh, uh, renewal of the West Colfax 2040 plan. Uh, it is certainly aspirational and it is glittering generalities, but it is a good solid vision of what people want to see. We were approached by a number of people and community organizations that uh, concur. In fact, they're more, uh, they're at least as concerned about it as Ms. Johnson and I. Uh, the 2040 plan, I'll display it again, it's a real catchy cover. Uh, the 2040 plan doesn't ask for more gas stations or convenience stores. It wants something walkable, something vibrant. You know, I'm not going to go walk down the street so I can walk past a come and go gas station or a 7-Eleven gas station. That's not attractive to me at all. Uh, or to um, much of anyone else. I believe our uh, comp plan, I, and I know that the Colfax redevelopment plan was trying to get away from Colfax as a an auto-oriented area. Uh, a lot of that effort was made because we uh, had way too many used car lots over there. But that was the purpose of it. The aspiration for it is to become a much more vibrant area. The uh, group that's working now, uh, uh, including West Colfax Community Association, Applewood Valley, uh, uh, the uh, Daniels Welchester area, uh, a lot of folks that are right there along the corridor are telling us what they want to see. And I think that community vision is what we should follow. Uh, and I agree that this is going to pop up in spot after spot. As soon as we limit Colfax, Wadsworth's going to start sprouting these things. Then Kipling, uh, even Pierce, or, you know, they can, this could pop up anywhere as long as there's a commercial side on the corridor. Uh, I'm also concerned, and I think uh, the folks with the 2040 plan are too, that we shouldn't be spot zoning. If we limit the area we change too greatly, too severely, 
it's spot zoning and we cannot do that. Uh, I think the distance uh, component is very important as well. And, uh, but then as long as we're doing something here, let's accomplish as much good for the community as possible. It is not good for the community and those people who can't drive to Safeway or King Supers. It's not good for them to walk across the uh, street to, to a convenience store and find nothing more than uh, uh, corn dogs on a stick or donuts. Uh, I think that we can by uh, implementing a conditional use permit and requiring it to go before planning commission or council that we can in fact require healthy food to be sold to people who need healthy food as much as they need anything else in this world and people who have very little else in this world but an appetite so um, let's just broaden this enough to hit a lot of community needs, to do a do something that will really change a number of facets uh, for our community members who right now don't have much choice. Uh, anything else you'd like me to address about the uh, questions, Mayor? No, I, I think that's helpful. And, and we still have uh, Ms. Johnson, Ms. Vincent, who can kind of add some more context of how we got here. So thank you for that. And and just a, another plug in on the 2040 plan. It, it is on our website under planning and all of our plans. And it is spearheaded by the West Colfax Community Association. There are two other huge organizations that are involved. Uh, Mr. Abel named Daniels and Applewood, but you also have Iber and two creeks so basically that whole whole corridor over there um so i'm going to go to uh miss johnson then i have miss vincent i have miss harrison i have miss franks your hand is up still or again okay take that down and then once we round that out if we could just kind of get some sort of context for some direction um to to give mr parker we can move forward so miss johnson Want to address any of those questions that your colleagues have raised? Thank you. Um, may I see my picture as well? <laughs> I I don't see anybody's picture except the questions here. Oh, there you go. Okay, thank you, uh, Mayor. You brought up Iver, and uh, that's interesting that you. But they are a very struggling organization right now, and I do not know at this time if they will remain viable, uh, which is really um, a sad thing. I really appreciated what uh, Charlie said. Thank you, Charlie. And Jacob, thank you, Jacob. I would just like to reinforce that we can't ignore the public on this. And Jacob, you said it perfectly, that we need to codify a plan that the community has had part uh, of uh, dealing with and, and their vision. These folks are paying property taxes. They have to live with this. And they are very vested in this area. Um, uh, again, West Colfax Community Association, Daniels Wells, Chester, Applewood, Two Creeks, People, people have gotten their attention and they want to be part of this. Um, the reason partially why we're here was because there was so much angst by the community when they started realizing that so many gas and convenience stores were going in. And we can't ignore what, uh, what the community is telling us. Um, in response to something that Dana said and uh, even Charlie, actually there's a convenience in the gas station going up at six in Kipling, uh, which is, you know, they're gonna start springing up everywhere. So I do believe in a citywide plan. 
Uh, it won't take too much imagination to see him going up and down Kipling as well. Uh, once again, you know, we talk about a vibrant corridor, a walkable corridor, and yet we are getting gas stations. There's a mixed message there to me. I don't get it, frankly. I appreciate, Mike, that they've done a market analysis, but Travis also said that some of them don't know what the other hand is doing, if so to speak. Um, I guess that's it for me for right now. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Miss Vincent and then Miss Harrison. Yeah, I won't I won't um, say a great deal, but I I do want to point out that we I believe that we had spent a lot of time last year looking at a lot of businesses and doing a lot of small business loans and trying to put out support there for the places like like the Dickies. I think that was specifically mentioned. I know up and down the corridor um, and and I'd be happy to talk to you, Councillor Springsteen, about um, the motel hotel licensing. Please note that every hotel and every motel in the city has to be licensed. It's not just the ones on Colfax. The ones on Colfax are getting more attention because as you remember from what we saw last week or last year, I guess, technically, um, many many of those places are bad i have i have a personal issue and one of the things that that brought it to force for me was the high amounts of prostitution that's being run out of some of those the drugs and particularly the child trafficking um which does not take place you are right in belmar it does take place on colfax um there's oftentimes that we'll look at one issue but that has ramifications for all of the city and i think that's what we're doing now the, the restaurants, to some people's point, and the shops, they're not going to survive if all we have are, are gas stations and convenience stores. Um, and that's a lot of the concern. It's not all a low-income area. They're all up and down Colfax. Um, but people want some diversity, and there's not just been the work done on gas stations. There's been a lot of work done. Some of us are still trying to get some of us are still trying to get sidewalks and lighting in the area so people can walk back and forth um, to support uh, a lot of the businesses that are there. Um, so that's where I'm. That's where I'm going. We don't want to just one type of business in any area. I would think. I don't think an area wants 14 coffee shops on each corner too. So um, we need to look at the diversity, and this is something that was brought forth because people were very passionate about it up and down the corridor and it does not go into 2040 plan and i'd be happy to talk to anybody on council about that too because i'm a little familiar with it um so that that's all i have to say <laughs> thank you all right miss harrison and then we're going to go to public input too we do have some support and if you thank you, if you don't thank wish, you mayor if you don't wish to speak again please lower your hand Thank you, Mayor. Um, I just have one quick question for Travis. Of the proposed and I get, I'll, I'll say the ones that are currently building, they're gonna be built no matter what. This uh, would not affect those. But could we go back again on any of the ones that are, we saw the all the stars that were across there. Would this affect any of them at all or will it affect none of them? depends on what you do and how quickly. There are two um, that have gone through the pre-planning, which means they're not, you know, they've got no rights. They, they've just got answers from staff on what's permitted now and what the zoning is now and what, what their path is forward. Until they submit a formal application, any changes to the code would apply to them. So there are those two are still sort of up in the air on whether they go forward. And my understanding is at least one of them may not go forward no matter what because of site issues and floodplain and other things. Um, so the, the most that could possibly be affected are two of those stuff. So what we're uh, effectively talking about is preventing more coming in, um, not necessarily affecting the ones that have already either applied and or are in process. Correct. Okay, thank you. That's what I wanted to confirm. Thank you. 
All right, so let's go to the public input portion. Uh, this is the opportunity to be a part of this conversation and, and uh, kind of give your input as to what we presented or, or the different options that are here. Um, three minutes, I will go ahead and get my timer going here. Sorry, I'm a little bit off. While I'm doing that, Mr. Rome, do we have anybody in line to speak? We do. We have a uh, phone number with the last four of 0680. Right, 0680. 0680. If you give us your name, address, or name and ward, we'll get your three minutes going and I'll give you a 30 second. Great. Good evening. My name is Jessalyn Sharazai and I'm a resident of Ward 1. I just want to thank all of you. I know that you're entering into, you know, the third hour of your day, so I appreciate that. Um, this topic is so important to our ward, and I've heard a lot about this in our community. I appreciate the council taking the time as well as staff and looking into this. Um, my question originally, which has been answered a number of times, is around the, the three that were clustered at Kipling and Colfax, and whether there would be potential for us to, uh, you know, there's all these comments about using free market to, uh, you know, to whatever result, but if there's three in such close proximity, how far along in that process can they be? It sounds like that's been answered. So I just really want to reinforce, I've heard from a number of counselors who are, you know, questioning the importance of this and, you know, just really appreciate having this conversation um, as a member of Ward 1 and a person who's well-versed in the 2040 vision plan. I can tell you that this is not aligned with what a lot of us in this ward need or see for the, for the future of this community. And so I appreciate the time and I'll yield back my time. Great, thank you. Anybody else, Mr. Rome? That is all, Mr. Mayor. Okay, so I will close public input. Mr. Parker, could you do me a favor and put that the questions back up? Or it's, it's, it's better when I can see people's faces because we're doing some consensus building, but um, I guess, can you read the first question maybe? How about that? Sure. First question is, should new regulations for gas stations and convenience stores be limited to Colfax or apply citywide? So I've heard, what I've heard is citywide. Um, could I get some nods? I know I, I just don't want to vote, but I guess we could use, use, use the yeses. <laughs> So yes, citywide, okay. Well, so that um, removes the need for question number two because yep. it's citywide and that includes all of Colfax and not just portions of Colfax. Uh, so I'll go on to number three, um, it, which is do the regulation changes need to apply to convenience stores without gas or just to gas stations? And keep in mind, in order to apply to convenience stores without gas, um, in order to prevent those from happening, we'll have to use the form restrictions like the transit zoning or the two stories. Um, we could also tackle them if we allow them, but regulate what they can sell. So yes, th this one wasn't super clear, but I think it th was to look at both of them and to put some more restrictions, may maybe enhancements, some more enhancements on convenience only you know, as mentioned in food deserts and things like that. Does that jive with, and, and I have hands up now, so I have Ms. Harrison, Ms. Franks, and Mr. Skilling. Or your hands up just saying you agree with that? Okay, Ms. Franks, go ahead. Uh, the only thing I wanted to clarify is I, I'm certainly uh, still at the stage where I'm learning about this. And so I'm kind of just giving my my general feel. But once we get back a little bit more data points and we know maybe we get uh, some legal opinions on what we what what can and can't be done. So I think all that kind of meshes in. So when I'm giving my nod um, or my yes, I just want it to be clear that 
certainly need some of that background information to make sure we're being really thoughtful and doing things that are going to align uh, well with uh, good legal practices and things that will um, help that community, that our entire community meet their vision of really getting that economic diversity. So I just wanted to clarify my nods are not that I'm in favor of that thing, but more let's explore that direction a little bit more. Yep. Fair to say. And, and so we're building off of a memo and then a presentation tonight to really start getting us narrowed down. This is gonna need more community conversations, certainly gonna need the planning commission and it'll need our legal, right? We have a new city attorney coming on board. So there may be things that she looks at and says, oh no, you can't do that or this is a good idea. Mr. Skilling. Well, along those lines, I was just gonna ask Travis if we, and I should know this um, since I've memorized our entire uh, zoning code front to back, but do we have a definition of convenience store or are we using city slang when we say convenience store? Because that seems like a building that sells prepackaged goods is a convenience store. So I guess to, and that doesn't really require, I, I don't think there is a definition of it, but to, I guess to Barb's point, that's the kind of thing that we would have to understand more about is how you put how you define what we're talking about here. If it's not in our code as a thing that we're trying to regulate, well, now we're gonna have to define the thing. So we better start figuring out, and maybe our new attorney has some thoughts on that, what have you. But to, I would agree with exactly what uh, Councilor Franks just said. This is one of those examples where we need a little bit more input when we're trying to differentiate those two uses. I appreciate that. and, and I. I as much uh, input as you can give tonight along that line as well because you're right gas station is a defined use we can tackle that pretty easily the convenience store is going to be a harder lift because I, I guess the the best information that i could get from you now is um is it primarily what's what they're selling that is important or is it the character the the exterior characteristics so if you had a traditional 7-Eleven that sold more healthy food, does that solve the problem? Or do we want a more urban 7-Eleven and it's less important what it sells or is it both? And that that guidance from this council is gonna help us a lot in what to bring back. And Ms. Hodson, I'm sorry, it looked like you wanted to weigh in as well. Oh, okay. All right, so Travis, thank you, you just added a most complicated one and maybe this could be something that could be looked at from other communities that might define I mean it's similar to our tax code which taxes food for home consumption or you know groceries so I maybe that could play into some sort of definition but I, I still let's see I have uh, Mr. LeBear's hand up Mr. Skilling and Ms. Franks I'll, I'll I'm, I'm lowering I was just going to try to add a short thing, which is I think addressing the immediate issue of the fuel pumping stations, you know, sooner than later makes more sense. I think the other element element is interesting and, you know, the food desert thing is interesting and having healthier options and all that is interesting. Uh, I think that might be a much longer conversation that shouldn't detract from the other one. So if it were me, I would say focus, let's focus on the one, the first part, the fuel stations. Let's focus on the other part as a sort of more holistic, uh, you know, citywide plan, uh, secondary. That would be the way I would do it um, because there are options out there. I mean, Choice Market, for example, which is coming up in Denver, they're like the Whole Foods of convenience stores. They're awesome. You know, they cook you a burger on the spot a healthy vegan one <laughs> so you know that might be the sort of thing we don't want to uh block from happening so anyway thanks yeah, good feedback uh mr abel uh just quickly convenience store is defined in webster's dictionary and it is webster's is generally the uh, uh source for court rulings so that might be a good place to start mr park but it, it is a good point to make. Okay, so with that kind of zinger, do you want to continue to focus on the actual gas use 
and see what could come about ancillarily with convenience. Um, is that enough direction, Travis? Is that? Yeah, we, we can bring something really, I, I, I appreciate Council of Lapierre's point. We could bring something quickly on gas and then have a longer later discussion about convenience. So, and again, Council, this will go through more analysis, but is there a consensus on that? Okay. I'm seeing yeses. All right. I also heard, I think, overwhelmingly from the group on distance to look at distance. I'm getting a lot of yeses. Okay, so we got that. And Travis, what does that leave us? Is there two more? I know there was a number five you had and then maybe four and five. Number five was the exterior versus interior convenience. So I think I've got guidance on that. Um, so I think we've got what we need. I, I heard uh, distance, but there may be some play for a special use or, or condition of use for yep. these gas stations as well. So maybe some combination there. Yep. Okay. All right, Council, is there anything else that we did not have? Okay. Mr. Parker, thank you very much. Thank uh, you. All. Thank you. All, all great comments and uh, a good dialogue. And I think this moves us forward in a, a meaningful manner. And you know, more things Colfax will be on our agendas coming up as as we continue to look at Westland and things like that. So we'll be revisiting. So if you clear your hands, because I do have hands up, are those meant to be up, Mr. Abel, and Mr. Lebeer? Okay, Mr. Abel. My apologies if that was a zing or it was not intended as such. I noticed it made everyone smile. That's what the intention was. And I neglected to tell Mr. Parker what a great job he, he and his staff have uh, done on this presentation. We gave them very little to work with and they really fleshed it out uh, profusely. So thank you. Thank you. Mr. LeBeer. They, Sorry, I was just going to say, in, in lieu of Charlie's Zinger definition, uh, or lack thereof, Denver does have a definition on convenience stores, just so you know. So uh, there's some more, there's some some text out there in the Colorado community that already has it. FYI, thanks. And full disclosure, I was giving Travis a hard time about the Zinger. Oh. <laughs> so, all right. Well, again, thank you and uh we are all good there and so um council one quick thing if you could i know everybody's been i think enjoying themselves and their families if you could get your information into donna and the forms that uh miss franks and uh mr skilling had created last year will help us with our retreat planning and um those are those quick fixes uh, policy as well as goals and, and I sent out kind of what we're envisioning for that um, going forward so that would be helpful if we could have that by next Monday the 11th and then we can get that to f the facilitator and start to work that into our plan is there anything else in regards to that Kathy that we need or anything else kind of bet general business wise for the council right now um, no, as it relates to the planning session, I think we're in pretty good shape as soon as we get that feedback um, from all members of city council, because then Heather, our facilitator, can put that together and redistribute it, all of it, all the packages out to each of you. So we'll all be prepared. The date again is January 30th. And I don't know that we have the time established yet, but when the agenda goes out, we'll make sure to have the time set up too. So you'll get more detail um, probably in the next week or so. Right. And trying to balance all of your feedback as to how long you want it to be and how long you don't want it to be, but also realizing uh, we have a, a lot of stuff to cover, a lot of stuff from previous years. And so we're gonna try to find that best opportunity. It will be in this format, which isn't always amazing, but that's just what we've been given right now. Uh, Mr. LeBeer, Ms. Vincent, hands are up. Yep. Go ahead, Ms. Vincent. Um, I just had a question. So Heather will not be reaching out to us individually for input this year. We'll just send it to her and she'll send it back to us. And that's the plan right now. Um, okay. we, had, we didn't hear anyone request that and we're 
frankly, really trying to look at budget. So trying to really limit um, limit time spent. So if that's okay. an important element, we can certainly factor it in, but that wasn't planned at this point. No, I just wanted, wanted to make sure. Thank you. Sure. And then finally, and we've been trying to do this for a long time, but during the year, you know, all of you are on all kinds of different committees. And, and right now we have a legislative one that's starting to heat up. We have a Dr. Cog committee that just passed an amazing uh, thing for us. So I would like to go to committee reports during our study sessions. And I, if I remember correctly, we used to do this a long time ago. And then council reports are the second, our regular meeting one. So I wanna really focus on your committee reports. It's important for the community to hear what's going on and what you're doing. And so I'd like to take the study session time for reports to offer that if you have any updates on committees. Mr. LeBerry, I think you do. <laughs> Sorry, I wasn't sure if you're talking about right now or next study session, but um, well, I will say that uh, Dr. Cog, we got some great news. Uh, you know, uh, part of the Denver Regional Council of Governments and CDOT's uh, safe street program. We got awarded the uh, largest award uh, for their program of $10 million. Um, that's going to come to helping make uh, Colfax and you know, a more safe, walkable area. And part of that is because it's uh, considered, you know, the most dangerous uh, pedestrian corridor uh, in Lakewood. And I believe uh, one of the most dangerous in the region. So uh, what that money is supposed to go towards is helping uh, with, you know, lighting and crosswalks and widening sidewalks and different things like that that'll uh, really benefit the Colfax uh, corridor and community. So I think it's, it's an exciting thing. Uh, a city of Lakewood uh, will have to put up some money, uh, unfortunately. So I think, um, you know, that's something we'll have to figure out how to do. But um, I'm excited about that. And I'm sure, you know, Kathy can could talk more about it. I know uh, Jay gave us a, a little bit of insight on on what they were going for with when they applied for that. So very exciting news. Yeah. Uh, can I just add one thing? The matching dollars that Lakewood is coming up with is coming from our uh, Tabor dollars um, that okay. was specified for transportation. So it fits really nicely and the timing works really well for us. So um, I'll at my executive report, I'll give a little more information, a little more detail um, next week. I'll plan to do that. I thought Jay's memo really was uh, had a lot of detail, but I'll I'll help that by um, doing it at this meeting so the public can hear. Great. Thank you. Great. And, and I would add just real, real quick, uh, CDOT really wants to see this money uh, or Dr. Cog really wants to see this money hit the hit the ground running as soon as they can. So they're trying to work with CDOT to to sort of expedite these projects. So I think that's a, another nice thing uh, that hopefully will be helpful. Great, fantastic. All right, Ms. Johnson, legislative, and, and I'm just throwing this out tonight. So if you don't have an update on your committee, it's okay, so. Thank you, no, um, our committee did meet about uh, three, four weeks ago with the preliminary meeting, just to kind of reorganize, get us back into the groove of things. It's been a long time since we've met. And uh, CML is having a legislative kickoff on the 13th. I will be attending that. Uh, it's interesting, the legislature is um, supposed to open on the 13th. It sounds like that there is a strong possibility that they will go into an immediate adjournment, recess, pause. I'm not sure what the correct answer is uh, due to COVID. So it's going to be an unusual session again this year, a little different. We're going to have to be nimble and flexible the way that we um, the way that we meet. On Friday the 15th, CML is having a policy committee meeting i will be going to that and i will be giving the uh committee an update on what is there there have been some preliminary discussion on different uh, pieces of legislation 
probably have a better idea of how far that is going. Um, but it looks like an interesting year again. Thank you. Thank you. And you did adopt a policy statement. Is that correct? Did you do that already? So if council. Yes, okay. yes we did. Great. And uh, I'd like to thank Ben. He took a look at it and there were some things that needed to be changed, some common sense kind of things. We did have some discussion on it, but um, yes, it did pass. And uh, it's a good document. It's a guiding document, frankly, not only for us as a committee, but also for our legislators. They can see the way that we are viewing things and where our priorities are. Um, it's a good document. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. All right, Mr. Abel. Uh, thank you, Mayor. The Campaign Finance Committee made, met uh, a couple of weeks ago on Friday, right before the holiday. Mr. Skilling was uh, under pressure to get out of town, and Ms. Gutwein had a uh, homeowner's emergency. And uh, so it was rather inconvenient for both of them, and I'd like to thank them for go taking that extra step to spend time with us. We addressed a number of things, including a, uh, uh, some discretion in fines, depending on, uh, depending on a number of things we're using. Uh, we're off, uh, asking council to okay the use of the Secretary of State's guidelines for that. We also have a number of references into in our election code um, that refers to the uh, uh, election cycle, but we don't define election cycle. So we have an election cycle definition ready and we finished all but a couple of things. One thing that I would really like us to continue discussing before we bring this to council is that uh, there are certain certain roadblocks that shouldn't be in the way of running for office. And one of them is a parent or a child with a dependent adult uh, who have to hire someone to watch their charge while they're out campaigning. And I would like to uh, make that kind of care a uh, a legitimate campaign expenditure. So hopefully we'll be back in session as the campaign finance committee for a very brief meeting in a week or two. Great. And then we'll bring it all to council. Great. So if y'all have any thoughts about any of those things, please let us know. Thank you. Okay, so Ms. Franks, and then I have Mr. Bita, Ms. Vincent, and Mr. Skilling. Thanks, Mayor Paul. I just wanted to give a quick update on the Housing Policy Commission. Um, we finished kind of our elicitation work on short-term rentals in uh, late last year. That information was all provided uh, via our staff liaison, Robert Smith, provided to staff. And uh, Ms. Hudson put together a team of people who, um, you know, need to be engaged in that. Everyone from city clerk's office, legal, and all, all of those those folks and certainly code enforcement. And so all that information is being reviewed. They're kind of contrasting that to the earlier ordinance that had been provided to council. And uh, so uh, that will be reviewed. I'll help clarify any open points for them. And the format's either gonna be going forward that it comes back to the Housing Policy Commission for uh, maybe filling in some gaps then going to the council for a study session. It's such a big topic and complex topic that we certainly want to get it in front of um, uh, all of you so you have a chance to kind of review it in a study session format. So more to come once we're either going to go back to the Pol Housing Policy Commission 
and then to a study session or directly to a study session, and that is to be determined. And I really do want to thank, uh, let Ms. Hodson know that uh, Robert has been uh, exceedingly helpful, very responsive, appreciate that. And certainly I know that your directors and others have a lot going on, and so I appreciate them taking the time uh, to pour through quite a lot of information and a topic that we know is quite complex. So I just wanted to give, give thanks to staff as well. And that's my report. Thank you. So I think I have Mr. Beta then Ms. Vincent, or so I got budget and audit, Mr. Beta. Thank you, Mayor, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Okay, I just wanted to give you a brief update. We have our next budget and audit committee meeting on January 27th at 5.30, it'll be a Zoom meeting. Uh, <clears throat> all members of council will be invited to, to attend that. Um, I, whether you do or not is up to you, but we certainly um, uh, appreciate uh, those of you that are interested in, in, in our budget and audit uh, committee. Uh, that we're, we're working on a, uh, a, a uh, agenda. We don't have that quite together yet, but we one of them will be to introduce our new member uh, who is a, a gentleman by the name of Mar uh, Marlon McDaniel. You'll be voting on him next week uh, to uh, put him on as a citizen member of the Budget and Audit Committee. I think you're going to really like him. He's a young man, works for Jeffco, uh, Jefferson County. He uh, does a lot of uh, work with their innovation team, and we are looking forward to having him and bringing some new ideas and innovation ideas to uh, Budget and Audit Committee. So for no other reason, I think, I hope you'll uh, attend uh, so you can meet Mr. McDaniel. So uh, that's all I have for, for now. Great, Thank great. You. Vincent? Um, yes, the, I just went, what? <laughs> the Head Start, I'm sorry, the Head Start Committee has been meeting um, fairly regularly, uh, at least once a month, and they've been short meetings, but there's some uh, new processes that are going through. I think one of the things that's been, um, they said that has been good about this whole thing is since we've been meeting on, since they've been meeting on Zoom, the parents have had to, had been able to have a lot more input into this. They've been able to meet. Um, what's coming up is the part I think that uh, those of you who have been on the committee and those of you who are look forward to is the tremendous increase that happens for these people who are in Head Start as they go into kindergarten and how they're reading and math and English and second language, everything just improves so much. And they said it's been it's been great this year. So we're looking forward to getting that output here next month, I believe. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Skilling. So as chair of the two committee, the first one, we had the uh, attorney recruitment. Obviously that was a wild success. Um, we did very well and I'm, I'm sure we are all pleased with the results of that committee. The other committee is the uh, ongoing development dialogue. We had just met December 10th for our third meeting on districts and possible uh, reforms to our existing laws on districts in Lakewood. Uh, we did put together, we had a pretty good consensus on a lot of recommendations that will be brought forward um, to the entire council uh, at some point uh, that will appear on the agenda and we will discuss those uh, recommendations further with the whole body if anyone is uh, more interested in specifics i do have those materials both uh, mr hutchinson who did a fantastic job with his memoranda, we have all the minutes from the meetings so that folks can follow along. Um, so all of that, uh, I thank uh, Mr. Parker and his team and Laura and everyone that has helped us out in that committee. Um, again, three meetings on that one topic, we got into the weeds pretty far on some of the stuff. So uh, that was challenging. Upcoming for us this year, in the short term, we have um, some ADU discussion, group home discussion, and then uh, inclusionary zoning um, will be a big topic as well. And I know that uh, in, the, in the near term, those are the topics that are coming up. And then I'm sure we will have some more exciting ones, um, discussions about whether this particular committee is just a great committee or the greatest committee. 
Um, I'm sure we'll need to, to find a consensus on that as well. But that's all I have. Thank you all. And so I've had the opportunity, a lot of things have moved fast. And as you know, today we moved to orange, which is really cool. It created a little bit of a firestorm for a lot of folks trying to figure out and how to navigate. So a big shout out to Ms. Hodson, the managers and the county manager. I mean, they were working up until late New Year's Eve trying to figure out how to get the five-star program going. And so luckily they got a little bit more time and what this will do now is now that we're orange, eventually it'll allow businesses to operate at yellow. There's still a lot of confusion in some of the directives, which is, is again has caused some consternation, but that's how fast these things are flying. And so the Metro mayors continue to meet with the governor. We'll have a call them on Thursday and we meet with the uh, county folks and the managers on Wednesdays for phone calls talking about all the different things that are going on. So um, I can continue to keep you up to date on those. Did meet with via CML, Senator Gray and Representative Winter. They are trying to craft some transportation uh, language for some transportation bills and try to utilize some of those dollars. So that'll be interesting for our legislative committee to weigh in in regards to that. There's also been some talk regarding some affordable housing and you can imagine a lot of different folks are lobbying um, us to say, please let the legislature know that, you know, be careful on the regulation this year for businesses, for hospitals, any kind of new mandates are gonna be quite challenging as people are coming out of COVID and trying to get through this. And so that's kind of a quick, quick update of what I've been up to. And, and I think this went really well. So I thank you all, it's cool to see all the hard work and I think the community might only see us on Monday nights, but uh, they get to see that this group's meeting a lot to do a lot of different things. So with that, happy new year and we will see you on January 11th. Thank you. Adjourned at 850.